and welcome to an episode of Big Bonding Brush with your host CNK. That's me, Chrissy Noel Kinslow. So, it's summertime and the theme this month is summertime stories. And so I thought, what better painting for summertime stories than David Hockney's 1967's A Bigger Splash. Yay! So I did it miniature and miniature masterpiece. Here it is. Pretty darn cute. There's a lot of straight lines in this painting. So we have a little math to do. Dun dun dun. I already did the math. This is an 11 by 14, half of 11 is five and a half. And looking at the painting, it looks to me, and I measured this painting out as well, it looks to me as though this is the midway point. So this patio is about a quarter inch, or what did I do, a quarter inch or a half an inch from both sides of the midway point. And then I also found the midway point again, which is 5.5. Half of that is 2.75. I found that point right here, which is about this, the bottom of the roof. Dun, dun, dun. Want me to say that backwards? I can if you want. I did the measurements. Here we go. There's the halfway point. No, here's the halfway point. And... I did a half an inch on each side. And then in between the halfway point and the top, I found the halfway point, which is 2.5. I measured that. I did it on both sides. You can do that now. And I have a ruler, but a ruler is only 12 inches. And we're going 14. So, have to break out with the big guns. I do have a pencil. I rarely use a pencil, but um, sometimes I use a watercolor pencil and because you can just wipe it off once you get your marks down with acrylic. The other thing that I use sometimes is chalk. When I'm working on bigger pieces, I'll mark things out in chalk and then just paint right over it. It's kind of like what the masters did. Um, so I'm going to use a pencil. Pencil, ruler. What other things are we going to use today? Well, we're going to use a canvas, 11 by 14. We're going to use an easel, although you can paint flat if you so desire. We are going to need water. We're going to use acrylics, which work well with water. Um, we have a plethora of paintbrushes. I like my flats. A variety of those in larger sizes and then I also have a few of them in smaller sizes as well really nice for these straight lines and then I have lots of little ones that are crooked from being left in the paint water too long don't do that I have paper towels and lots of backup like I said I have my acrylics Today we're working with black, yellow, green, orange, blue, white, and I have brown, or you can mix up your own brown. Um, and then a palette in which to put your paint, mix your paints on. I like to use glass, but you can use a wide variety of things. I have different stations all over my art room here, and at different stations I have different methods that I use to put my paint down. So, without further ado, let's get crack a lack it. 1967's A Bigger Splash. Okay, so we definitely want these two marks right here. This is the bottom of the pink of the patio. And the top of the patio. And then the 
bottom of the building. And it's not going to go all the way over. So, looking at our painting, so we can make that decision right now, um, it looks to me like our midway point is about right there. And so it looks like our building kind of goes over about a fourth of the way over into the painting. So oh, if we are 14 inches, half of 14, see I didn't do this math, half of 14 is 7, half of 7 is 3.5. So we're going to want to go over 3.5 inches. Let's do that. as far over as we're going to go. I'm just going to lightly mark that. Oh, excuse my head. And it's only going to go that high. All right. Now let's connect this line. Sweet. And then, is that right? Straight. Does it all look straight? Looks pretty straight tonight. Okay. So, let's get the top of the roof in as well. And we're just going to eyeball that, baby. We're going to come up here. We're going to look at it. Okay. I mean, you could measure it if you really wanted to. But... I think we got this. Gonna come over just a little bit further as the pitch. All right. Get rid of that for now. And there's our angle right there of the roof. We have our basics. Okay. But yeah, one more thing. We are going to paint all the way around the painting. So. Let's get those lines drawn in right now. Here. Here. It looks really good. We don't need anything up here. 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 And this line right here. All right. Sweet. So we're wrapping all the way around. Okay, we're going to start by mixing up some blues. We have our standard dark blue. Let's get that baby mixed up. I'm going to make a really light sky blue for the sky. And a little darker. We might even add a little bit of green into the pool water. Your swimming pool water. So there's some blue. I'm going to get some more blue. We've got a lot of coverage to do. All right. Some light. And a little bit of green. Shake it up, baby. Or a lot of green. We are going to be using a little bit of green on those palm trees, so it's all good in the hood. Here we go. I'm going to take my flat brush here, get it wet, because all paintbrushes like to be wet, and wipe it off on my paper towel a little bit. Let's get a, a nice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the pool water first. So, I know I just said that I was going to work on the sky, but I'm going to work on the pool water first. So, I'm going to take a little bit of this white 
bring it over to the blue. Get that mixed up. Ooh, that's a nice light blue. Ooh, that's very nice. I love mixing colors. Sometimes it's nice just to go straight out of the bottle, but sometimes it's nice to mix up your own color. Now when you're trying to match a color, you probably have to mix. So it's a good um, good technique to have. Look at that blue. Darn near matches that blue without even putting any green in it. So we're going to go for it. What we're going to do, call me crazy, we're going to flip it. Okay. We're going to fill in this whole area with this blue. We're going to start with the top so that by the time we get done filling this all out, then we can, it'll be dry and we can flip it and we can do the sky. Okay? So, let's get going. Yeah, that's a nice blue. Nice, cool blue. I'm just going to get my paint off of this your brush and then I'm gonna switch over to a bigger brush and remember you can paint and pause all day long on these paintings I'm gonna pick up this nice big flat get it wet wipe it off that's the beauty of having the, the pre-recorded videos so I'm going to come over here, and this was my line at the pool, so I'm not going to go any further down than that. If you get a little wobbly, that's okay, because you're going to go through with a dark blue line above that, and then a white line on top of that, so yeah. But do your very best to stay straight with this line. That's why I drew out this line. It's, it's that important. Right? Okay, I'm going to go over to the other side. Do the other side as well. Move this out of the way. already. Okay. Now let's fill in this whole area. Mm -hmm. So the, the, there is a documentary about David Hockney that I am very interested in watching. I tried to find it on Amazon and it's not available. I did, I think I might have found it on YouTube. So I'm hoping that to watch that this evening. It's supposed to be a documentary where the filmmakers followed David Hockney around for three years. Okay. It was nominated for an Emmy. And, I don't know. Mr. Hockney seems like a very, a very interesting character, right? He was born in 1937 and he's 83 years old. And he says, that reading and painting and a few nights of nice sex is the secret to keeping the spirit alive and young. Little whippersnapper. Anyway, I really want to watch that documentary. I'm going to. Big 
Tiger Splash actually is 95 by 96 inches. What is that? It's pretty, pretty big. It's pretty close to being square, which this is not. Um, that's okay. We can work with it. Okay, there's the pool water. And you'll definitely want to go over it again. Because there's little areas where you can see the canvas. But for now, we're going to let that dry. And then we'll put another coat on it. Filling the top. The top should be pretty darn close to dry. If it is not, then just pause. And then as soon as it's dry, come back. Okay, I'm going to flip it. Like so. And now I'm going to go and mix a lighter blue. Coming back to that paintbrush that I used earlier. I didn't really get it super clean. That's okay. I'm just going to take a little bit of blue over to my remaining white. I want to do a really, really light, pale, 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 pale blue. And I want to do enough of it to where I can do the whole sky, wrap around, and come back and do a second coat. So I am mixing quite a bit. There's nothing that is more frustrating than mixing up a color and then running out of it before you're finished um, painting the area that that particular color. Yeah, hey, embracing your imperfections. I oftentimes have to mix up a new color and then go over everything that I just did. So, here we go. Let's paint the sky blue. I have a really nice light blue. We're going to start with the top, getting all the paint off of the brush that we just mixed, mixed our blue with. And then we'll switch over to a big brush again. I like the big brush for the bigger areas because you can do a nice smooth surface. And this one, this painting in particular, it's very smooth. I'm like a Van Gogh where you can see all the brush strokes and you want to see all the brush strokes. This painting is very smooth. Okay, so I did the top. I'm going to go around to the edges. Here you're only going to go to the top of the roof. Which, by the way, this painting is supposed to be set in LA. Mm -hmm. Let's paint the other side. We're going all the way down on this side to the patio. The beautiful thing about this painting, too, is that it seems so modern, even though it was painted quite some time ago, and it's it still seems modern to this day. All right, I've got the sides. Look at that. We almost have the entire canvas painted. All right. Then let's get move on over to a bigger brush. Get it wet. Wipe it off. Let's get some paint laid down on the front. I like to use a lot of paint. Um, I'm not too afraid of it. I like the more paint you get laid down, the, the less pores that you see in your canvas. I really like thick abstract paintings as well. Okay, we're going to paint along here with a nice straight lines, line, slow and steady. Wins the race. Painted 
Jasper John's flag with me. And you should be getting pretty good at those straight lines. Yay for straight lines. But again, if you get all wiggly, don't worry because we're going to be painting the top of the roof another color and we can go right up along there and clean it up. No worries. I have some of this, enough of this glue for reserve that I should be able to use it if I need to touch anything up. Um, if you are painting and pausing, just take a, a Ziploc bag or a piece of plastic or something like that. Just lay it over your paint. That's what I do. Okay. So... There we go. Look at that. We're getting there, right? Excellent. I'm going to go down and I'm going to do a touch up on that um, blue of the pool. Going back to my big brush that I used. Not necessarily all the way clean. Wiping it off so it's not drippy. And I'm just going over it again so I get a nice solid color. See that? That's looking nice. I don't know about where you're at, what kind of weather you're dealing with, but right now I am dealing with 100 to 110 and it is hot. So this is a perfect painting to paint. You know, when life gives you lemons make lemonade when you can't go swimming in a pool because you're confined to being home paint a pool <laughs> swim in your bathtub okay I made sure and touched up around my edges as well great that looks a whole lot better I believe okay Next thing that we are going to do is we're going to mix up a pink for the patio. I love pink. It's one of my favorite colors. And for some reason, I do not have red. So I am going to go and get the red. Yep. Yeah. I need red. Red is important if you're going to make pink. Here's our red. It, it's impossible to make pink without red. It's impossible to make any of the other colors in the universe. Well, ooh, wow. Man, I am heavy fisted on the paint today. It's everywhere. 
clean up on aisle Chrissy. Here's some more white. Pink. Let's make a nice, yummy, Pepto Bismol pink. Do it. Grabbing another flat, getting it wet. Okay. Let's bring a little bit of red over to the white. We can always add more red. Oh yeah, I do love mixing colors. Ooh, that's nice. That, ooh, it's pretty nice. Kind of bright though. We might need a little more white, which is fine. I'm gonna make as much of this as possible. I think that what I'll do is also add a little teeny bit of orange to that too do the building. It's kind of like a pinky orange. Okay. I'm going for a really light pepto -bismol. Even lighter than pepto -bismol. See how just a little tiny bit of red goes so far? That's hmm, very good, pretty close, close enough for me. Okay, starting with the edges. Just love the colors on this painting. We want to be real nice and tight along here where the patio meets the sky. There's one side. Other side. Oh. Flipping paint. Paint flipping. I'm a paint flipper. Okay, here we go. Let's go all the way across with our patio. Straight lines. So just take it nice and slow. We erase some. Not racing me. Maybe you're having a speed racing at home with your family. That could be fun. Okay, keep on moving with that pink across your canvas. So as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Hockney, Mr. David Hockney, artist extraordinaire, does a lot of reading. Which brings me into today's joke. Hot um pump. Ready? <laughs> you know you're an artist when you purchase a whole bunch of books and all of them are blank inside. Put on pum. Do you like that? <laughs> I know, corny. Corny, cheesy. But what is life if you can't be cheesy? Okay. I am a straight 
Eins. Tall, straight, all angular. And then we'll get to do the splash. And it's super fun because you get to be a little wild. Everybody's splash is going to be a little bit different. Absolutely. I don't know how you would get an exact replica of David Hockney's splash without maybe mm, projecting it or super gritting it out or something. But that's not what we're about. We are not about total, total copying, but more emulation and inspiration inspiration and imitation is the largest form of flattery there's our pink hmm it's a little darker over here red great there's our pink edge Now we're going to work on some of this building. And so we're going to want to pick up a little bit of orange. I'm not going to use up all that pink that I created. Wow, I'm moving over here. Some orange. We're going to mix up the colors of the building starting with this square right here. And then we're gonna lighten that orange for the curtains and the rooftop. Okay. Taking our orange, a little bit of our orange, into some of that pink. Let's see what we can do up here. Oh yeah. I'm gonna come, trying to come up with like a peach of sort. That's real good. Liking that. Mm. Maybe a little darker. Mm. Okay. So I just brought a little bit more orange into it. A little bit darker. Alrighty. So let's take a look at where this is. Here's the midway point. So we're going a little bit over from the midway point. So let's say here's the midway point. I'd say we're gonna go over to about right here with this block. So let's just mark that out. Oh yeah, that's a great orange too. Straight line. Make sure it's straight. Just making sure that I am marking this in the right spot. You can always break out with your pencil and mark it. That looks pretty good though. Okay, I'm going to just block this area in. Awesome. I'm going to go all the way over. And we have a little shadow underneath the roof along this whole wall. We'll work on that after we get it all blocked in with color. Make sure you go nice and straight along this edge. You 
could veer away and do the same painting in your own colors. Maybe emulating your house. I'm using this brush. You can use whatever brush you want, whatever brush makes you feel comfortable. I like the medium flat. I can get that straight edge and I can get a nice smooth surface as well. So there's that, there's that area. Now we've got a lighter version of that. So I'm going to break out with some white over here. I'm going to bring some of that color to the white and create a nice light version of that. And it looks to me like it has a little bit of yellow to it. So, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of yellow. So, here's that lightened down color, whatever we're going to call it, wall color, and then a little bit of yellow. Mix this baby up. This is good exercise, too. You can just mix up your large paint, large quantities of paint. Okay, I'm going to try to go just a little bit. Bloop. Good job. All right. Let's add just a little bit of yellow to that light wall. Let's see what we have. Hmm. Oh boy, that's pretty darn close. PDC, pretty darn close. Right. So, let's do the rooftop. I'm going to start over here. We are getting super close to having the whole canvas painted and then it's just a, a lot of detail or a little detail comparatively speaking to some of the other paintings we've done. Finishing touches. So we're going to scoot along here. Try to make it straight. Smallest, not the biggest, but the one in the middle. All right. Ooh, yeah. I can tell I like that one already. You can find like exactly the width that you're supposed to be going. Then it's easy just to run it along, right? 
doesn't look all choppy. Choppy McChopperton. There we go. It also is really nice and, and kind of easy if you allow the layers to dry in between because then you can just run your hand along there. You don't have to worry about about um, ruining the other color. So like that's not quite dry. So I'm not going to be able to balance my finger on the canvas anymore. dry up here on the sky. It's hard for me to talk when I'm doing these straight straight lines. You try it. Try to talk. Say a tongue twister. Okay, here we go. She sells. She sells. She sells seashells on the seashore. A little wiggly. It's a little like a white that goes all the way along the top here. It's a little teeny bump. I don't know, the roof and an air conditioner maybe? The roof, the roof, uh, the roof is done. Okay. I'm going to take that same color down into the curtains. So, we have here, this is all going to be a square window. It's a big old window, and so the curtains it's actually just a little teeny bit darker. So I think what I'm gonna do is just grab a little teeny bit of orange and add it to some of that other um, roof orange that I made. Saving some of my roof orange just in case. Just in case I need to go back and touch it up. Okay, that's just a tad bit different, which is good. So, right about here is where your curtain is, or blinds. Just gonna run it. And we'll go over this all with white. So this curtain is a little bit bigger than this curtain. So let's make sure we get that nice and straight. There will be opportunity to fix it though. If it does not, that looks great. This is about right here, I'd say. So, and it is not as wide. Uh, 
How's that? Whoa, hi, crooked lady. That looks great. And we can make that curtain a little bit smaller, but that's good for now. All right. Here we go. Where should we go next? I think that I'm just going to go over the sky a little tiny bit and then. I'm going to take a little break and let things, let things really get dry for me here before I move along. Going back to that sky blue, just wanted to cover some of the little areas that I see where the canvas is poking out, naked, a little naked. Get that in there. See, especially over here, you can see all those brush marks. Don't want those. No, thank you. Pencil marks. We don't want to see those either. No, thank you. All right. spots that are still a little wet. Alright. Excellent. So, again, we just want it to be completely dry before we move on. We don't want any um, running or rubbing into things and so we're going to pause and I'll see you back in a flash okay we're back and things have dried and I can see some areas that need touched up I don't know about you but oh yeah Oh yeah, so let's go through and do that. Let's see, starting with the curtains. Putting just another little coat on my curtains. Awesome. on the ceiling, the roof, the roof. Just another little coat. This all we're asking for. side of the building. Uh, 
All right. Excellent. And seeing a couple little touch-ups in the pink area. Dried a lot darker. But I like it. I'm gonna embrace this pink. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Awesome. Okay. And then a little bit of this uh, blue down in the pool. I see. Still needs a little touching up here and there. Hmm, that pool looks inviting. Okay, let's move along. We are going to cruise, cruise along here and we're going to fill in the windows, the detail of the windows. So we're going to make a light gray and a darker gray. A light gray for the sky in the background. And a darker gray for the silhouette of the neighborhood. So this type of painting would be described as pop, from the pop art movement from the 60s. You love me some pop art. I just look at that. I barely use the black. Good job. David Hockney painted this painting when he was a teacher at the University of California in Berkeley. I tried to get into college there. They did not accept me. Buggers. I tried twice to get into college there. Anyway. So, David Hockney also holds the title of being the most expensive painting sold by a living artist. And that was a portrait of an artist, which was another pool painting. And it was done in 1972. And guess how much that baby sold for? $90 million. Hello. Okay. Back to doing some gray. Just gonna pick up a little tiny bit of black and start mixing it in with this white. I don't really want a really light gray. And while I'm at it, and while I'm mixing, I'm going to mix up my darker gray as well. So the, here's my light gray. It's looking pretty nice. I like it. I like it. So we've got super light gray. Pick up more black. Add it to the white. Except a darker gray. That's nice for the shadow, but it's not as dark as I want to go. So I'm going to pick up a lot of black. Whoa, hello. And bring it over to the remaining white. And I should have three grays. Oh yeah, that's, that is definitely the gray I'm looking for. Okay. Oh, that makes me happy. Bam, bam, bam. Here we go. I'm going to go to my not smallest, but the size, I don't know, quarter inch, flat. And I'm going to pick up my light gray. 
come all along here. With the light gray. And that's all gonna be white, so I'm just leaving that. But we are going all the way up to the curtain. And then we're going to come over here, this side, right along the curtain. Or blind. Level or blind. We're going to go all the way around the edge of the painting. And now we're going to go to the darkest gray. And we're going to do this, the, the, um, the reflection of the nearby houses. So this building wraps all the way along and is flat. So we're going to do that first. Edge. I suppose you could change the reflection that is seen in the window according to your landscape. Okay. We're going to go right to the edge of the curtain. Sometimes it likes to dance. Get to leave room down here at the bottom for that white window pane. Oh, oh yeah, we are super close to having this entire canvas covered with paint. Okay. We'll go back and touch that up here in a second. But let's continue. Continues at the same height, over for just a bow pins, and then comes down. That, and it comes 
Silver. His pitch is flat. Back, set the flag, show does. And then it looks like we have a rooftop here. So we'll put a little angle. Hmm. We're going to throw a palm tree in there. Give me a minute. Let's just finish working on these buildings. There we go. That all filled in. that. Looking good. I'm going to go back over and just do a little touch up here. Touch up through here. Okay. I'm going to break out with a smaller brush to do this here palm tree. Looks like there's even another darker layer if you really get in there, which I guess we better get in there. Alrighty. Let's mix up a, a darker, an even darker gray. Almost black. None blacker. Well, not quite though. You don't want it black. That's, I don't, I don't see much black in this painting. That's pretty nice. Okay, let's take a look at this. We have, we have, I'm going to move this back so I'm not leaning in so much. Let's start with the edge. Oh, well, that's a nice, nice dark color, gray. Okay, we're going to come across to here. Come on down a little bit. Throw in that palm tree in a second. Then this uh, this part is up just a little bit here. Oh, I wish I would have gotten this in the in the miniature version because I just didn't see it. Okay, and then we're gonna come across for some bush action. go. Oh yeah. And then up here it goes kind of high. Is it really? Ooh, 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 wiggle hand. I'm going to come all along the bottom here and then I'll start putting in those palm trees. Back to that smaller paintbrush again. Let's get it wet. Wipe it off. Got some 
some of that darkest, ooh, dark. Your brush is about to fall apart. Okay, so we have a bush through there. That paintbrush is too big. Get a smaller one. Go. And then the palm tree runs right along the edge here. It's a little bit of palm action. There. And then we have a little little guy here, little sprout, 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 uh, baby, baby tree, and some bush, and a bigger palm tree. Palm, fat palm tree. We'll fix that with window pane. Okay, let's get the branches out here, the palms. Okay, sweet. The reflection. Good. Oh, it's just kind of. save all of our white trim for very last. Now, remember, we mixed up a, a medium gray back, way back when. That's our shadow. And we're going to run it real straight all the way along here and across our curtains, too. So, I'm just going all the way across and I seem to do a straighter line when I'm painting from left to right. So that's what I'm doing. Let's do that shadow and then it runs along here as well. So we had our light pink orange color over here. We're just 
just gonna dirty it a tiny bit with the gray. A little bit of the gray. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that light gray and add it. Experiment. Then you never know. You really never know. Okay. Yes, I'm happy with that. Okay, so your shadow here is going to butt right up to your roof and go down as far as your shadow that's in the windows. So I'm actually going to grab my smallest flat brush. Here you are, you little cutie. for that shadow. Then, you know, it can only go so wide. It can only go as wide as the paintbrush. So here we go. Pick up that color. Let's pop that shadow in. Here we go. right along there. That color ended up looking perfect to me. Just cruising right along. This here's shadow. Shadow. Next thing we're going to work on is actually the shadow. Do you see that little chair? The little director's chair. The shadow of the chair is the same color as that shadow. So let's just get that put in. It's just right to the right of the windowsill here. And it's kind of a What is that shape? A parallelogram? Oh, oh my gosh, I think it is. A parallelogram. Basically, it looks like a square was blown over by the wind or something to that effect. There it is, that's the shadow. Woo! Of the director's chair. Holy smaller tin. Alrighty. Before we move on to the green, let's get this dark blue band along here. And I'm cleaning off my paintbrush, that white paintbrush, the little white paintbrush. So that's about how wide I want that blue band, dark blue band. When you have some of that original blue straight out of the jug, we're going to use that. We're going to run right along here with the dark blue.
this is the pool edge, the edge of the pool. If you are enjoying yourself and you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Please like, share. All that groovy stuff that one does on YouTube. This is all free, so I'd love to be able to make a living doing this. Especially if y'all are enjoying it. probably going to have to do a second coat of this blue, I can tell already. That is a-okay. Oh, these straight lines. Are take so long, right? You could tape it off, blue tape it if you really wanted to. Ah, best way to do a straight line is to commit. See, it's straight when I don't stop. It's a little jiggity when I when I do stop. Sometimes it is easier to paint flat. Oh yeah. You can hear the hum of the air conditioner. I do not play music so that you can play whatever kind of groovy music you want to play. Love to see your finished paintings. There we go. Okay, so we're going to move on to the green of the trees and the palm. And then we'll come back and we'll do another blue touch up on that. I'm going to a smaller paintbrush, one of my tinies. And I laid out a whole bunch of green earlier. Didn't need it. So here we go. I'm going to run basically to about here with this little manicured grass line. So I'm just going to go all straight along with a straight line first. And then we'll go up with our little brass blades. a few shades of green. This painting um, is all about escapism. Love that word. Escapism. So in the splash, you, you can't see who is in the splash so it, it it's you it could be you it could be anyone it could it's so totally relatable and you absolutely can escape into this painting all right there's where our grass is going to be I need a little water because that green is pretty dry. So we're just going to kind of go along here with some little stroke marks. I'm going to make 
another color, another hue, a shade, a tint of green. Just be patient. Go along here and get that grass in there. little blade. <laughs> Frequent my water as paint is really drying out. I didn't put plastic over my paint. This painting sold at auction and I, I look to see like who bought it, uh, someone famous on it or who owns this painting and it's unknown who owns it but guess how much this painting sold for? Come on, take a wild guess. 2.9, oh, I'm sorry, 29.8 million dollars. Yeah, pretty snazzy, huh? Okay, I'm gonna go in and get these palms. There's one that's gonna run right along here. Maybe what we should, you know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do it. Okay, one palm goes here. And then this one that's behind the building is at the same height and a little bit bigger. So, straight. Okay, we're going to mix up some other shades of green. For that, let's go back to our blue. So we just want to get this dry down here where the water is going to take place um, before, before, any, before the sky, it's more important. So let's just do another little coat of this blue. and solid. And then we'll go back to the green. Before we do the diving board, the diving board will be the last thing that we do. But we are getting super, super close.
a new camera angle this time around. Hopefully my my big old head isn't always in the way. It's all a learning experience, you know? I'm winging it. Whoa, I just picked up some white. You don't want that. No, we want pure blue. Straight from the bottle. edges. Well, we don't have to frame it. Okay. So, as I said, we're going to mix up that green. I did see a couple little spots that have dried now in the gray that I would like to just touch up. Through here. There we go. Just a little bit. Seeing that canvas. It's one of my pet peeves. Drive me crazy. And if I paint without wearing my glasses and then I put my glasses on. Ooh, doggy. Mm -mm. I'm actually, now that I have that gray right here, I'm going to make this tree a little bit thinner. As palm trees, ooh, I just picked up paint with my hand. It's okay. We'll fix that. Okay, palm trees fixed. Pink. Fixed. Blue. Fixed. Check, check. Bada-bing, bada-boom. All right. Now, let's do some greens. Um, I have a little bit of white here that I'm seeing that I'm just going to mix up on the side with this green. Excellent. Add a little water to it. Oh, yeah. That's nice. And then let's just go along the grass. Add a little bit of little dimension here and there. A little thick, thick, thick of the grass. Yeah. This way, that way. Nice. Here and there. Let's give it a little bit of life. Since grass is living. Okay, let's go up to the palm trees. A little bit through there. Flick, flick. I'm going to make a darker green too. Oh, yeah. See that? Oh, it's just coming to life. Coming to life indeed. All right. I'm just going to take a little bit of this black over here, bring it over to the green. Don't want it super dark. But I would like a little darker hue, shade. When you add black to a color, it's a shade. When you add white to a color, it's a tint. There we go. And just a little bit here and there. Oops. So little tiny bits. Excellent. Line up in the palms. That? Oh yeah, that's just little one, two, three, four, little five little flicks. Excellent. Okay, now looking down at this chair that's going to be going in, I need to get the legs drawn in. So I'm picking up that dark, and I have that dark gray, and I have it on. I'm going to bring this just like that a little bit so I can see. All right. The seat is up in the window. And you've got a little cross, cross, 
is really what we're looking for. A couple of X's, stuff like that. Alright, let's give it a shot. Um, huh. There we go. That could go all the way over here, right? Across. white that's going to be right there. Dog vermin. Alright. Well, let's just keep going anyway. Then this other cross goes set up after we do the white. Next we need to do the brown of palm trees. So I have some brown and it's a real light brown. It's a very yellow, yellow brown. I mean, it's more yellow than brown. brown down. I feel like going into a Dr. Seuss poem. Brown down, brown down. Okay. A little bit of brown into the seed here. Yellow. Got kind of a tan. Ooh, hi. thing is to make sure that this is straight. Alright? Whew! Alright, so this here palm tree If you need to pencil it out first, you're welcome to do that, you know? Because my paint wasn't completely mixed up, there's like a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown and it's almost like I don't need to really do much more to that. We'll see when it dries. I did go over my pink, just a tiny teeny weeny bit, so I'm going to fix that. There we go. Fix that. All right, so take a look at what we have going on here. I think we are to the white. Well, all white. This is exciting. Let's mix up our white, get it nice and nice and mixed. Get my paint brushes. Super clean. Nice little, little tiny brush. That little flat brush. I'm digging that one too. Alright. So the first place we're going to get started with the white, we're going to start at the top and we're going to do wherever we need white and we're going to move our way down. Are you ready? We're going to go all the way 
along the top edge of uh, the building with white. So let's do that. I have my paintbrush really small. the edge first. You might have pencil mark left and this is where you want to go over that pencil mark. Sometimes I'm all about straight lines and sometimes not. I'm going to use quite a bit of paint because I don't really want to go back over this unless I have to. Just cruising. Cruising along. And you can be sure it's somewhere over here. Just keep going with that white line. Paint pens are really nice for straight lines. If you've ever used a paint pen, whoo, they are sweet. So to going back over here. Just widening it all the way along. So it's kind of nice to pick the perfect paintbrush that will only go as wide as you want it when you're pushing down on it all the way. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? conditioner spout or whatever the higher part of the house. I'm assuming it's an air conditioner. It's right there. Go about there. Top. Reminds me of Fiddler on the Roof for some, some reason. No, I won't break into Fiddler on the Roof music song. You're welcome. Alright. There's the roof. Yeah, we might have to go back over and touch up a couple little spots. Put it here on the edge. There we go. 
Okay, next spot <clears throat> is right along here. We're doing this whole window sill. So, on the edges, we're marking. here and down here. Okay? Yep. A second from having our canvas covered. Another straight line. Fish just caught. Fresh coconut water. Oh, now you're dreaming. Okay. So we have a really thin, 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 super thin, tiny, teeny line that runs along here. So. my little brush and making it very fine. And I'm going to run along here with the window panels. Sure, they're straight, <clears throat> vertical. Bring it all the way down to the bottom window sill. There we go. Excellent. We're gonna do the same thing along here. a little different. I have a big panel. I could even put another panel in there if I wanted to. But you see you see my imperfection. And that's okay. here with the small brush. I'm going to get that chair. So this is just going to be a sliver. That would be the seat. And then a rectangle.
in my little escapism world. I can have a lawn chair or hammock. Yeah. That's what I'd have. I'd have a hammock. Okay. There's that. So let's continue along. Get this window sill finished. So I'm actually going to use this flat brush. Mucho gusto. It's a little better. I like it. A little more consistent. I am enjoying this brush on this particular painting. Finishing up this window sill. I need to go all the way along the bottom. And you may have heard me complaining about that I needed still window to be my white. Yeah, so we'll have to touch up that area where the legs of the chair are. That's fine. We can do that. We can do anything. done with the window pane, window sills. Nice and straight. jumping in a pool at the end of a hard working day. Huh. Just thinking about being under quarantine at a house such as this with a, with a pool. That'd be nice. Although I wouldn't want to be in the city. 
scary. Okay, let's keep running along here. If your paintbrush gets too much paint on it, then just give it a quick rinse. That fine point going again. Okay, cruising along here. Put this white line. Got a little white there, but I'm going to do just go back and fix it up with the pink. Spots definitely need some attention. Cruise along here with our pink. Straighten up some of these lines. Okay, I don't know, phone ring, something. Um, so, here we are, we're back, and we are doing touch-up on this white and pink and everywhere else that we think needs straightened out just a little teeny bit. That's what we're doing. Awesome. Awesome. And more awesome. We have officially covered all of the canvas as well. Should have celebrated that. Straight line. Those straight lines in there. Okay, 
I am ready to move to the splash. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready. Over all these straight lines for a minute. Mama needs a break. How about you? All right, let's do it. And so, I'm gonna move to a bigger brush for just a second. I'm gonna pick up some white. I'm looking at about right here, right here. Boosh, nice splash. Oh yeah, let's get it. Woo! Now we're having some fun, people. This is a nice swoop over, swoo! Splash, splishity splash, mickey mash. Mm -hmm. And then the splash runs about here. This is nice and thick over here. Ooh, yeah, let's get some paint on there. Nice line along there. Ooh, yeah, nice. Keep that dark, nice and white. That splash, splish. Oh yeah, I like it. That's, that's fun, right? Are you all having fun on this one? I am. Okay, that's where my splash is. Ooh, that, I need to get it over here a little bit more. Ooh, it got a little red. I don't know where that came from, but let's get rid of that. Mm -mm. Don't want red in the pool. Uh -uh. All right. Okay. Kind of wash this out a little bit. This is a nice, smooth swoosh. This is a nice swoosh through here. some lighter areas, we want some darker areas, and now we're going to break out with the little brush. Oh yeah! And we want to get some squiggles and some wiggles and some jiggles and splashy woos. bunch of little, any little splash lines over here. Are you going to get your splashes exactly like David Hockney got his splashes? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Ain't going to happen. Maybe with a projector, but that's what, not what we're doing here. Okay. More and more like a splash. All along here is a nice little squiggle dark line. And a squiggle, 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 squiggle. Some splash up here. Let's get it up here. The light. Your brush is getting too much paint. Don't forget, wipe it off. Get that nice fine line. Yeah. Splash until you feel like so your diving board is going to come right down here like this 
Flash dots here and there. Oh yeah. Just a lot of little squiggle lines. And splash dots. Okay, feeling good about that. Hold that a strain. I'm gonna go in with my fine brush. Legs and arms on my chair. happy with it. Nice. Alright. There we go. Last but not least, the dining board. Alright. This is kind of a, a mustardy yellow pan brown. Almost sort of like what we did for the trees. So I'm going to go back to that color and mix off of it. That was over here. Just going to mix up some more and maybe make it a little bit different. Uh, bring a little more brown in there. commitment here, folks. So I am going to do a little trick. Connect the dots. We're going to go out to here with our diving board. Right? And we want a straight line across just about. There. Does that look right? Put it up on here. Let's see what's up. We can always go like this with our paintbrush. So. There's my height. There's my height. It looks right. Alright. Sweet! And then we're going to go here, down to here with it, and my goodness, I don't know, this is going to be, this is weird, seems very weird, perspective is oftentimes really weird, alright, let's connect those dots, shall we? Flip this hair painting here, right 
now. Ta-da! You know where you need to paint. So just paint it. Go there to there. Such a cheater. Not really. It's just, you know, trick. Trick of the trade. How I get her done. Okay. Super, super wiggly right now. lines in there. I right, just need to fill it in. And we're going to wrap around the edges too with this diving board. Makes sense, right? We don't want to just stop on the edge. There we go. And it is absolutely going to need another coat, but it's going to need to dry a little bit before we give it another coat. Definitely. Because we're covering it over blue, I mean, we could have marked it out. We could have marked it out with a pencil. But we didn't. So we'll just let it dry and then we'll put another coat on. And then that'll be groovy. Almost done. Just gonna let it dry a little bit, come back. We'll do another coat on that diving board and the little line along the edge, and then we'll call it good. We'll call it David Hockney. 
let her dry. Okay, we're back and our board should be dry. So let's just put a, another little coat on the top of it. Give it a nice smooth surface. Cover all that blue. should be dry on the bottom as well. So let's just give her a little flip. Sweet. Get that second coat in there. Nice and straight. Love it. Okay. And now we're going to run right along the edge of the diving board with black. Or not black, but dark, 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 dark gray. Maybe a little bit of black in there. I don't know. Let's go dark gray. Super dark gray that we had mixed earlier. Add a little water to it. Uh huh. And ever so carefully, just gonna run a line along here. Awesome. You can flip it back over. You want to make sure that this line is the same width. No getting all wobbly and wiggly on me now. Straight. Okay. So you want to flip it over so that you can run along the line there. I'm not going to flip it over. I'm not going to flip it over right now. I'm going to sign it. I'm going to sign it with that dark gray right down here in the corner. Remember, if you enjoyed the Big Bonding Brush, please like, subscribe, and share. Also, all of my lucky subscribers have a chance to win one of these once a month during the Acute Auction House. First Friday of the month at 8 o'clock. I auction off all the miniature masterpieces and give away a one big bonding brush to a lucky subscriber. You have to be public subscriber because I can't tell who you are if you're not if you're not public. Um, but yeah, help a sister out, help a fellow artist out, like subscribe and share. Got her signed. Got her done. All right. CNK's big bonding brush version of David Hockney's A Bigger Splash. 1967 to 2020. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Until next time, stay creative.